how many sensitive people are in therapy because even if they had wonderful parents, parents had no understanding of their sensitivity. So we really need to change that and normalize it. And secondly, just there's so many people who have that reaction to reading the book because and only because this trait is real. It's absolutely real. And people say to me, well, how could you have discovered a new trait? It's not a new trait. It's been mislabeled. It's been called shyness. It's been called inhibitedness. It's been called introversion. This to go back, this is a, a trait that we're pretty sure is innate. It's found in actually over 100 other species at least, probably many more, as a survival strategy, always in about uh, 20% or some minority. You know why that is? Is because it wouldn't be of any use to be sensitive if everyone were sensitive. And so it's actually an advantage in some situations, obviously not in every situation, but it's a survival strategy that works and it has to work or we wouldn't be here. <laughs> and it's too large of a percentage to be any kind of disorder. It's, a, it's an alternate way of living one's life. And there are many examples among animals of how they use this strategy in different ways. But we want to stick to children and also just the, the trade in general so that you can kind of, parents can be convinced this is real. And there's a quite a bit of research on it now, both by myself and other people are joining them yeah. very much. And one of the things that they're finding is something called differential susceptibility, which is that if a sensitive person, especially in childhood, was in a negative environment, a lot of stress, they are more vulnerable to depression and anxiety and shyness than other children in the same uh, kind of environment. But if they are in a good enough environment where there's positivity, they do better than other children in many ways. They're less vulnerable. 